Thank you. So welcome to Heart Talks. I'd like for you to meet my friend, Kate Hart. Okay, Kate is one of those people who came into my life and opened my world. And I have made a lasting friendship, sister, sisterhood forever now because of the value of our relationship. Uh, Kate asked me to make CD covers for her sound therapy CDs. And so what we're ready to talk about here, I've got to experience. I'm not just talking. I've, I'm walking. When I made her CD covers, I got to listen to her sounds. And I listened to them for days and days and days. And I give it credit for for transcending, uh, for transcending my vibration to a higher, for helping me uh, heal that that needs to be healed, for giving me balance. Uh, also, she gave me an opportunity to use my creativity in a way that I had never gotten to use before. And I am so, so proud of what we have done together. Kate Hart, that does ancient sounds and it is fascinating and i want to share with you guys uh what uh what we've experienced together and what she is sharing with the world it's amazing so kate thank you so much uh for joining me uh in this aspect and um i i can't wait to uh let everyone know what you're doing and and share what you what you've got. Well, so, thank you, Sheila. Let me ask you. Um, let's start from the beginning of of how you came to understand ancient sounds. Well, um, that's probably just been ongoing, lifetime after lifetime. But um, it, I've been around music all my life. I mean, I've been a performer since I was. 18. I had my own bands until 2008. So it was from 1969 to 2008, which is a long time. And uh, so I was always around music, but my background is I'm Romanian. And so gypsy music was a huge part of what we would listen to in the house. Um, you know, the, my people came from Transylvania, and uh, which is Odd, I know, <laughs> but anyways, they come from Pennsylvania, and um, and uh, and my mother we have this incredible voice, and so she sang around the house. She was a housewife, but she was a real thinker. She was an astrologer. She was she a card reader. She had a uh, you know, she was a traditional astrologer, which almost nobody is. It's very difficult stuff. Wow. Um. So um. So that's what was always in my ear. And um, from the time I was in the womb. So when I would hear that music, and to this day when I hear that music, it makes me cry. There's just something so soulful and ancient. And, so, you know, so I was kind of for the last, I would say, 25 years, been listening to really world music. But, you know, I really liked it when it was, when it was edgier, when when uh, people were starting to get pretty creative like my Irish music and putting it with African rhythm and, and all of that stuff. So I started playing with music like that, really taking it out of its boxes and combining it. And, um, and then put out a record with an alias name of Lucy Mongrel. And, and the only thing I, and it was a very strange record, but it's my favorite record I've ever made. And, and it was, um, it was like a world indie and, um, and it got a couple of Grammy nominations, which was crazy because the only thing I wanted out of that record when I was making it is that they couldn't play it on the radio. I went total creative freedom and, uh, and I was known as a blues singer. So I was doing this like in hiding. Right? So the blues world doesn't like to bend the rules too much. So uh, anyway, um, after really having that success with it and playing around with all those different sounds, it really opened me up in some way. 
but I was still locked into being in a band. And this was like early 2000s. So um, I just, uh, I, I, was te I started to teach a lot. I was teaching voice. And I know I'm, I'm answering this in a really roundabout way, but this, this is the only way it can be answered. <laughs> uh, is that um, I was teaching a lot of young girls who girls were when they know. were um, when they were developing their voices and getting connected to their core voice that they would shift they would just be more confident wow and it, you know i could really see it in them it was happening to everybody but that's where i could see it so that's where i started to see that sound was really important in just the development of like psyches right wow. and that's just with regular sound you know our regular musical scale so i thought whoa Right. So I kind of, I, I, you know, from that, I was just started to read about Pythagoras and sound. And, and this is around 2007 to th maybe a little earlier, 2006, around that. Um, and I came across something in a book that was rows of long numbers. And I knew they were something. And um, it was, I was reading out loud to my husband. It was a, you know, it was the, a, a kind of a spiritually minded book. And I was reading to my husband, very old, old book. And, and when I saw those numbers, I said, that's something. So I, I added these long numbers up 14.8826677888 there were like 12 of them so i added them up and I, they came to 360. i went oh that's interesting so i just uh i kept doing some research and then i would play a tone and i would see what it was doing to my body and i would feel it in a certain place. I go, hmm, that seems important. And anyways, that's where I started. So, so and as had, I, you had the uh, ability to make a tone and feel where it was affecting your own body. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I didn't know that I had that ability, you know, but I mean, now I can hear a sound and where it's hitting me in my body. I know exactly, you know, you know, like if it's, if it's in the sixth chakra, I, I feel it right in the middle. Whoa. Okay. I feel that. And, and, a lot, and when I'm composing my music, when I'm feeling something that's too, in too much, you know, in one area of my body, I know to balance it out. Wow. You know, so that was kind of the beginning of, of, of that whole process. And I had to find special equipment because I had to find a tone generator that would take 12 digits and a lot of them stop at four and even though i work out of a recording studio he didn't have sophisticated enough equipment so that was that took three months just to find wow. the equipment and if you that story is incredible but i talked to seven different people and every single one of them their name was chris which was <laughs> It was Chris, Christy, Chris, or, I mean, it was just crazy. And so I finally called this friend of mine who was, um, was on the West Coast, and he, he had Emmys for doing a lot of TV show, uh, you know, a lot of themes and uh, musical themes and stuff. So I, I called him, I knew him from high school, and I said, hey, do you know where I can get this tone generator? And I'm telling him what I'm trying to do, and I've got these ancient tones, and I really think there's something. And he laughs for about 10 minutes after I get done. And he says, well, that's weird because I have the scientist from the Hubble telescope here in my studio, and he was um, recording all the sounds that the Hubble telescope did of the planets. Oh. And, and he says, he'll know where to get one of those machines. So that's how synchronetic it just started to get. As soon as I got on that path, I was off and running. I mean, people were just showing up out of nowhere and have you heard this? And do you know this can do that? And what have you? And then I'm a avid researcher. So that's, you know, that was the journey, you know, constantly exploring, 
getting feedback from people. That's all happened until I met up with Gretchen, who's um, getting her, her doctorate in quantum medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, when I met up with her, I made this innocent statement like, you know, I really want to be able to prove what the sound does. And she said, I can do that for you. And so we've been working together for, um, I think, almost a year now. And she's in the process of writing her dissertation on what we have found, uh, sound, uh, the sound that I've created, which I'm calling psionic music, um, is what, uh, what does it do to the body? We can actually say we have proof this is what it does. Oh, finally at last. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, I, I, no, I do not care about, um, uh, I'm, I'm a real renegade, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't march along with most people about politics and mm -hmm. I just, I just do my thing, right. you know, I just do my thing. And, um, and allopathic medicine, I've never been that friendly to just because my mother was an herbalist and my mother did everything organic. And so I was just raised to, you kind of just heal yourself. And yeah, if you get a broken arm, you go to the doctor. And that was the extent of it. But there's something in me that a fire that's been lit that I really want to take this into allopathic medicine. I really want this music to be in emergency room. And I want it to be in dental chairs and I want it to be in trauma centers. And, and, you know, I'm not going to, I will never say it cures, but what we do know through the studies is that it puts the body in a state of optimum, an optimum state where it can heal and yes. it can heal, you know, um, more efficiently because what we're creating is a coherent system. Right. 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 And then we know that, if we can get all of our chakras spinning, then things can, yeah, this can be lifted. It can be healed. And just activating energy is, is so important to healing. Yeah. That's, it's what I like about sound. I, I, I what I like about it, maybe it's true of, of other modalities. I, I just know what I see sound do and you know it, the body takes what it needs and it leaves the rest and so I don't have to come in with an agenda um I you know all I do is and I shouldn't I should never come in with an agenda other than to love the person that's sitting in front of me that's the only agenda I have but um it just becomes obvious to me once I'm in that room with them what I'm gonna what I'm gonna work on it's just like I can you know and it will change I'll think I'll know when they're standing in the room and they lay on the table, it becomes something different. Uh, but what I like about this new music is that I'm not even paying attention to the chakras. I'm really paying attention to, to um, tones that can truly balance the system. So I've, pulled away from thinking of it in terms of all these energy centers mm -hmm. and just going with these with musical scales that are resonant with us and the earth with the cosmos I'm, I'm just going more in that direction maybe more as a composer than looking at it as a healer and having spent some that many years in the music business, maybe that's just what makes the most sense to me is it's got to sound really good. Right. And the other missing piece was that almost any healing music I was listening to, I really didn't like it. It didn't feel like it had any energy for me. Um, it was, uh, first of all, if people were singing on it, which was rare because most of it's done with electronics, which I'm not a fan of not that I don't use them at all but I don't use them very often or I use them very sparingly for kind of a wall of sound right. but um you know uh most people aren't connected to their core voice so even if they were singing I was hearing a voice that wasn't truly resonating and and resonance is a big part of this because it 
It's what resonates the bone, the bone that travels down the spine. I mean, it's just left over from when we were in utero, you know. Okay, so core, that core tone you're talking about, each one of us has our very own tone. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Tone. And does that tone change as we change? Yes, it, so it as, does. So as I'm weaving into my my higher self, then my tone is is changing as well. Yeah, um, um, not all the time, but yep, I've heard I've heard you know core voice change. I think what people short themselves on what's available to them, voice wise. So, you know, I do core voice connection workshops and, you know, almost everyone that gets, gets up to sing, I'm, I have everybody sing something, usually happy birthday, right? So, and you'll hear it over and over again, they'll go, happy birthday to you. And that's how they'll sing and how they talk. And, uh, and so I have them uh, yell. Uh, I really love to sing. In full voice to have them yell and then I have them sing the same song again and you just hear this huge shift in their uh, of their voice and them you just see it they go what wow. so knowing that it's available is number one and then knowing how to get to it is number two right wow so that that was really a key piece so when i began to for me understand that the human voice is so critical in the in sound in the healing of the body then i started to sing all the compositions but it sounds like instruments as you know right and then i then i it came to me well it's not good enough just sing the notes i sang every uh, every note uh, up to 12 times a piece to give it a rich harmonic field, which is based in Pythagoras's work. So um, that's, that's why this music sounds different. It's got the human voice on it. It's stacked with deep harmonic field and, um, and the choice of the scale that I work with. Wow. Okay, so tell tell me what all you are doing with these sounds. What 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 projects have you got going? Oh gosh. Um, well, the research is number one. We're really lucky that you know we're able to do that. Oh my god, I can't. And that's because that to come out. <laughs> no. How and is that's... you going to bring that out? Is it going to be like a video or just a talk or? Yeah, we're we're ta well right now. We're booking to um, go around and speak about it. So, um, and it, you know, there's a lot of offshoot projects of this music. Yes. Um, so that's where we're at with Gretchen and I. We're just you know conducting the research right now. She wants. She we're working with um, how this music can um, help heal um you know any kind of neurological problem mm -hmm. so people that are on antidepressants we've had really good luck with that mm -hmm. um so uh you know people that have been in a lot of trauma mm -hmm. so that's where we're trying to take it next you know we'd love to work with vets so we have some vets that have signed up for the research and nice. you know anything like that and that's really you know gretchen's passion you know i I just, what I do is I look at the information that we're getting. I see, I can look by the test that we're running, where in the music it's not working by looking at brain waves and, you know, if the heart jumps or, you know, so I was able to really create coherent music by reading the data. Yeah, it's a, and to me, that's the perfect world. You, you bring a little science into it. You bring your artistic self to it. And then it becomes something quite authentic. Yes, absolutely. You know? And then uh, Patricia, who's uh, one of my partners at um, Therapeutic Sound, Patricia um, has been a yoga teacher for, for over 30 years, I think. And she's also, she, she's done so many different forms of yoga. And she's a well-respected teacher around here. And she noticed after she was listening to the music for a while that she, her spine straightened out. 
And we were blown away by that. And, you know, you have to know when I'm creating this music, I'm not expecting any of that to happen. Right. And so when I would start to hear these reports, I got off my antidepressant, my spine straightened up, and I thought, what the heck have, wow. are we doing here? We've got to figure this out. Wow. So I want to be incredibly responsible and know what is this doing? How is it doing it? How can we move this forward? How can we be really effective in people just getting well, you know? How can we be of help? How can we work with other modalities? Okay, if you've, you know, you've got to have trauma centers, can we put the music in and, you know, and make this a more elegant way of healing? You know, I don't know, you know, let's see who's going to be open to it. Yes. Well, we are certainly in a time of change and opening. And, you know, I did a show here the other day of, of, uh, using contrast as a tool and in the world of chaos right now uh that contrast can uh turn us around and and you know create peace and health in our world right when we're seeing the opposite out there it encourages me to be even more peaceful to be more healthful to be more aware of of my thoughts be more aware of the sounds that I have in my world yeah uh, yeah it, it's um it, it's a little bit of a snake pit to go here but this is how I feel about you know what is going on in the world and you know and I'm I'm around music all the time so I, I'm pretty chilled out <laughs> but that's my nature anyway because I understand I really believe that every single human being here is here for their full experience. And we cannot dismiss any human being on this planet, I don't care who they are, we cannot dismiss their right to have an experience. And the, you know, the people that we may think are the most evil might be the ones that have sacrificed you know, this lifetime to come in big and bold and create a lot of noise so that there was a reaction. And, uh, and so we don't know what the bigger picture is. And I'm, I'm actually a little exhausted by people putting their own personal kind of imprint on what, you know, these worldly events, everything's playing out exactly as it should. We're coming to the end of the patriarch. Well, of course, there's going to be a lot of noise in that sector yes. because we're coming to the end of that. Yes. So how do you think that's going to look? When things are ending, they're not Walt Disney movies with bluebirds sitting on your shoulders right. singing. Right. We're giving birth to new ideas and we're just not quite there yet. So what are you going to do? Obviously, every person here is meant to have this experience. So have it. Don't blame someone for it. Right. Have the experience, you know? Right. You don't like it? Yeah, okay. That's right. Very so, well. You know, maybe, yeah, maybe next time when collective consciousness is uh, manifesting their who they think needs to be a leader, because I don't even believe in that whole system, but whatever. Uh, but if, um, if they want to manifest, they may want to think that one through and say, no, we don't want a politician. They got that. So now you got to think it all the way through. What do you want? That's right. But so when you stop thinking that money is the almighty God, and when you stop thinking that oil is and people's homes are more important than you driving your car down the street. And when you think, and so when you, when you shift, then maybe something will shift. But you can't expect that to shift when you haven't shifted. Right. That's right. And I was, so I, I don't listen to it. It's, um, it's that people just don't tap into the bigger picture. Now, some do. They're usually the quieter ones. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but some do. So, you know, uh, out of all of this, it's actually leading back to music, which you worked on, the spinal cord of God. And I, I uh, went into this very esoteric place and, and thought, 
there's got to be a way you can trigger divine memory so that we so that we um, I just want to choose the right words so that we remember our purpose of wanting to be here and if we remember why we're here which is I believe to have experience right mm -hmm. so that it can be transmutated back up to source so once we understand that's why we're here then we don't have to be in fear because we understand what our job is right so i had i read um uh, uh, this uh, fella has um, a bit of an avatar out of argentina and i was re reading his stuff and it was, it was just really profound for me and he was talking about this and um and he said something about how the um akashic records are the spinal cord of god and I thought, oh, whoa, there it is. There's the information. Can we tap into that? Can music do that? Can music lift a memory? I mean, memory's got to be living in every one of our cells, right? right? So I am telling you, I worked on that for months. I mean, you know, what I needed to have in the music, I've got the sacred geometry tones, I've got... I've got uh, triads that um, are, you know, four different phases of opening the heart. I've got so much stuff in there, and I had to have it systematic. How I saw things coming through from source and bringing it down into the, the third dimensional reality, and then, you know, and how it's got to get transmutated and bringing up. I worked so hard on that, and, and at the same time was involved with the Trinity, which I think is what opened up my thinking to that. And um, as you know, what the Trinity is. So when um, that was the last big thing I worked on was I did Seonic three, and then I did the Spinal Cord of God. And I'm going to tell you, I could feel, and so can many other people. We just feel more relaxed every time. Like I, there was a, you know people saying they didn't feel so fear based, but you know it's just um, you know because of everything that was going on around me I thought this is what our message has got to be is not to be afraid right remember why you're here there's no reason to be afraid right and see I can't have a conversation that deals with that third dimensional man-made construct I just don't take it seriously I don't either I know you don't <laughs> it's all crime. <laughs> I think I'm getting pretty well known for that I think I've got yeah. a reputation now <laughs> me too yeah but I live in Michigan. It's a little bit tougher here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Kate, I'll tell you, I am, I'm really excited about uh, uh, the research uh, and how you, uh, how you deploy that out into the world. And I, I uh, would love to be able to have a discussion with you guys uh, when you get that all together. Yeah, we're, we're you know, kind of, uh, actually, this is the only interview that uh, I wanted to do until we were done with the work, because uh, yeah. you, you know how it is. You, you, you want to come out with what it actually is, and you don't want to have to backtrack and say, oh, well, well, maybe it doesn't do that. And you know what? So we just wanted to really make sure that, and, and she has to be careful. I mean, you know, she is dealing with, Yes. you know getting her doctorate and you know and so she's very cautious about uh you know saying this heals you know that's why i don't call it sound healing i call it therapeutic sound yeah. i'm not going to suppose that it does anything well uh energy and sound has intelligence and and anyone who has no understands healing it's the energy that does the healing. It's not the healer. And, yes. and even the one who needs the healing, if they can set aside their fears and allow the energy to do their work in all the cells of the body, that's how healing happens. And yeah, yeah. Easier said than done, you know. I mean, every, every day, you know, you... you your close friends are spouting fear. Everybody's spouting fear right now. And, and you know, people are really getting caught up in it. So uh, 
you know, uh, it, it, there's a real easy solution for it, and that's to live in the moment. And and there there is no fear in the moment. That's right. And as much as you can consciously live like that, and it's tough. I mean, it's a world that doesn't embrace that. That's right. Um, so you know, and I I live in the moment a lot, you know, and and I know when I'm not in the moment because I don't feel centered. Right. You know. So, and, and I know that the music that I make is, is an art form that's in the moment. That's right. And to stay really plugged into that. And that's, that's where the true information is. If I start trying to bring something in from before, or, it just isn't going to work. Just in the moment, in the moment, that's where it's all at. Where can people uh, reach you? Where can they find uh, your CDs? Um, they can go to CD Baby. Everything's on CD Baby, which is um, easy. And then, um, and then we're in Michigan. We do therapeutic sound and wellness, so it's in Berkeley, Michigan. It's a beautiful studio, and we I have um, we have three, four practitioners there, including me. Nice. Um, and we're just we're doing really exciting work. I mean, people are bringing a lot to the table at the studio because we're combining modalities with Reiki and reflexology. And we're finding that just to add the music really bumps up the work of the practitioner. So that's, you know, I've met with a lot of nurses and, um, and just to get them to apply it in some way, uh, and even when they're bathing someone or that, just to put the music on so that this person can relax. Because uh, uh, we've heard that from many people, the music helps patients sleep. Well, someone that's been traumatized has a hard time sleeping. Right. So um, anyways, back to where you can get it. Um, just CD Baby. All right. All right. Kate, thank you. I love you. I'm so happy that we have reconnected in this this lifetime uh and that we can continue uh you know somehow interweaving our lives together because i love you and i do so appreciate what you are doing not for just the people uh but for the entire planet oh you are so sweet thank you Thank you. I really mean it. I really appreciate it. All right, my darling. Well, thank you for thinking of me and I will stay in touch. Okay. From okay. my heart to yours, peeps, I hope you've enjoyed this. Namaste. Mm -hmm.